that, that I've been doing with her, we, we, you know, we talk about, I, I, I'm a biologist, so, so we, we know a lot about, the, we're learning a lot about the human microbiome. And so microbiome is just whatever, and not just bacteria, the microbiome also contains, co consists of viruses, fungi that live in you and on you everywhere okay so so now i mean they're increasingly doing more and more studies you know swabbing people in different places and seeing you know where what's growing where and i don't know if any of you have heard about like the the vaginal cheese making somewhere in europe i think you know or yeah you're making cheese from like you know some bacteria in between your toes um so so this is just i just pulled this from from a talk, um, and, I, and, and basically, you know, we're, we're learning a lot about like, the bacteria that are on our skin and in our gut, and so, you know, holobiont is just basically the sum of all the, the species, the genomes that make, make you, you know, you, right? That we already, lots of us know about like yogurt and bacteria in your gut, and you know, there's healthy bacteria, there's also bad bacteria, um, and that's why you need antibiotics, right? Um, so, let me see. Okay, so before I go to the next slide, um, so also, so then I started thinking about well, how much there there were a lot of estimates of how many bacterial cells are uh, in and on uh, humans. And so you know, a, a while back, maybe like five years ago, they thought it was ten is to one, which means that for every one human human cell from your DNA, there were 10, 10 bacterial cells. But now the estimate there's a new paper out that says that it's more like one is to one. So it's something like something like forty trillion. Uh, uh, bacterial cells to 30 trillion human cells. Then I thought, okay, well, we also poop. And every time you poop, a lot of, some, some of that is bacteria, right? So, so today was a fun day Googling like, uh, uh, or DuckDuckGo actually, now I'm trying to use that, uh, was uh, looking out for like human feces, bacterial content, you know, uh, a lot of fe fecal searches. And so there was no, um, I, I'll, get, I'll get to that later on. So I, I did some, some estimates, but, uh, but, but that, that's the proportion right now. So you're like one part human and then one part, you know, your microbiome. Uh, so, so for those of you who came for Microbial March at the Art Science Museum when, when Marketa and I were having some fun there, uh, we talked about, um, Philip also talked, Philip from, from Yale and US talked about, you know, the, the bacteria in and on our body and how it affects us, right? So there are things now that they're calling psychobiotics. So in the past, we knew that bacteria were required for some, some metabolites, right? So they put, have to produce some vitamins uh, that we needed. They, they, you know, they, they're living their lives inside there and they're giving us some nutrition. But also, um, they, there's now this term psychobiotics, which I like, which is that bacteria are producing you know, peptides and things that affect uh, our, neuro, our neurochemistry. And how they do that is, is this. So like, you know, I think I, I never took human anatomy when I was in school because I did genetics. So, you know, we didn't learn about the body. We just learned about chromosomes and DNA and things like that. And, and so the way, the way your bacteria in your gut, it's a, two, it's a two way street. So the way the bacteria in your gut can also send messages directly to your brain is this thing called the vagus nerve. And everyone in here should learn about the vagus nerve because it's very important also for, um, our feelings of well-being as well. So it's the two-way street. So your brain can send signals back down. Here. Yeah. Oh, hello. Thank you. I see one of the speakers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hi. Oh. Um, is this the other? Oh, there should be a no. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. And Mark, Mark is somewhere, I suppose. Yeah. Well, he didn't travel with us. Oh, okay. Well, he should be on his way. Um. So vagus nerve is, an, is, is a very important nerve, but basically connects your your digestive system to the base of your, your brain stem, I think if I'm not wrong. Someone correct me later on, <laughs> because I was, a lot of this has been the last week <laughs> in doing this research. And so, and so that's how your bacteria can, can affect your mood, um, psychobiotics, uh, what else? Um, we also know that, who knows what serotonin is? Serotonin, do you know what it's involved in? Serotonin is, is something like the happy molecule, so it's supposed to be associated with feelings of well-being and you know, and contentment, I suppose, have happiness. Um, but actually, and, and we always think that, that our, our mood is affected by our brain chemistry, but, and so we think oh, all these neuropeptides and things that affect our, our mood must only be in our brain. But actually, serotonin is, we've known this for a long time now, the majority of serotonin in your body is produced in your, in your gut, and it's stored in your gut. But what they're learning now is actually that your gut cells that make and store serotonin, so not, like something like 90% of your serotonin 
is, is in here. So it's also involved in digestion. It's not just, and I, and I suppose if you have good digestion, you're pretty happy. So, you know, let's just go, go together. Um, but um, what was I going to say? But, but what they're learning now is that your gut cells actually produce uh, more, produce the, the, the normal amount of uh, uh, serotonin uh, together with bacteria. So they, they work together, right? So the idea of this holobiont idea is that your, your microbiome isn't just hanging around on you, you know, being a parasite. It could be, you know, there's bad stuff, but then a lot of it's actually uh, working with us, right? Um, they're, they're helping us in, in some senses. So, so then who are you? Because you know, your, your, your gut not only if, can affect your mood, but it can also like, you know, there's some evidence and a lot of these come from like my studies. So of course you take this, you know, you, you, we, we cannot necessarily extrapolate it to mean that it's happening in humans. But in mice, um, you know, the, the, and flies, the, you know, when you, when you, you, you take away um, bacteria uh, from, from flies and mice, you see changes in their behavior, you see changes in their cravings, uh, their food selection. And so maybe, you know, I like to think that like, you know, every time I want chocolate, maybe it's not just me, but maybe what some of my bacteria want chocolate. And so I want chocolate. But it makes me happy too, so who cares, you know? Um, uh, so, so, so the word holobiont is, is, is meant for, uh, it's just a new way of thinking about who we are in, in a more, I guess, holistic, you know, I suppose, uh, ma manner. But also, um, it, it has to do with, it also has to do with your immune system. So when they, you know, I, and, I, and this is also very new for me. So like in reading about the philosophy of, of immunology, like how the field started, when it started, we always thought like, oh, oh, infection, right? So basically your body had to know what is self versus non-self, right? So I need to be able to identify uh, something that's attacking my system. So I know what's, what's me, I know what's you. Like it's clearly demarcated. But then, you know, like as time went on, we got, we, you know, we do a bit more research and then if the, the, you know, then, then a, a different kind of definition came up, which is that like, it is this pro, it's a context, right? So your gut is also involved, your gut bacteria are also involved in your, in the development of your immune system. Hello. Hello. Um, of course, sure. Uh, I talk very fast, I'm almost done, huh? <laughs> so, 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 so it was no longer just, you know, like I am my immune system and you are bacteria. So, you know, you know, we, we will attack, right? Because obviously there are beneficial bacteria. So, you know, th then, then, the 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 then the theory kind of evolves and, and it says that, you know, it's the context in which your immune system is presented uh, a, foreign a foreign body, right? Um, and so, so, it, so you're constantly negotiating, your immune system is constantly negotiating uh, what's foreign and what's, you know, self. Um, and, and of course, I mean, I, I suppose some of you probably heard about autoimmunity, like what does, you know, what, what does that bring to the, pic the, the definition of what, um, of who we are, right? Because when, in autoimmunity, your, your own immune system is attacking your cells. So what, you know, what's going on there? So then, you know, then now we have the, the holobiont, you know, theory of evolution, uh, which ties in with, with, you know, changes as we are learning that many of these uh, microbial communities that live or in and on us um, are actually required for our development, they're required for our health, right? They're requ required for us to, to function. Um, so, so how do we think about us and what we want? Because we also have to start, because now we are learning about all these bacteria, we also know that they, co they help to control a lot of, you know, uh, our bodily functions, right? Um, and so now I'm going to jump into antibiotic resistance. So, you know, in, in, in talking about our hologenome and now, you know, we know that, you know, there are beneficial bacteria that we want to keep around. Um, many of us also have, have taken antibiotics. Like, okay, actually, I'm very curious. Who, how many people in here have taken antibiotics in the last six months? In the last year? Oh, wow. What a healthy crowd here. Very good for you. No, no, no. No, I mean, oh, when I was in the US, like, I met a lot of kids and even kids here in Singapore. And they're constantly getting antibiotics, right? Uh, they have ear infection, recurrent ear infection. They still say after three weeks, they just give them another antibiotic. So, uh, and, but, but it's not actually the, the, the human use of antibiotics that's really scary. It is the agricultural use of antibiotics that's really scary. So what they do now, I mean, the US, I wouldn't be surprised if they're doing this every, pretty much everywhere else, um, is that you, even if an animal is healthy, you still get feed with antibiotics in it. Um, and... And I think they're trying to change some of the regulations on this, but 
uh, but basically it's, it's, it's still a sort of a voluntary uh, reduction of antibiotics um, in the US at least and, and the way antibiotic resistance works is that you know when you when you expose like an animal or, or humans right to your bacteria to antibiotics you, you're going to select for strains that, that can resist uh, those antibiotics so when you really need your antibiotics to kill off something that's already got the resistance and resistance is very easily spread between bacteria because it's not like there's something called bacterial sex where cells actually like meet and, but you can also like just pick up Bacteria can pick up pieces of uh, uh, DNA that contain uh, what they call cassettes, like gene cassettes that carry antibiotic resistance gene. So it's not just about, oh, you know, the bacteria have to meet, like, it's actually relatively easy um, to pick up antibi uh, antibiotic resistance. Ah, hi, this is Mark, one of the other speakers. Um, and, and, so, and so when you have agriculture, you also have huge numbers of animals. So what it is, is a numbers game, right? You expose lots of things, the, the, the chances of something picking up antibody resistance and then passing it on because it's more effective in this environment is quite high. And I was reading this very scary article, which I posted on Facebook somewhere, um, about how uh, while many of these agricultural farms are not going to allow researchers on there, right, to swap things and test. So, so these researchers in the US drove behind a truck carrying chickens from an industrial farm and then later on they swapped the surface and they found uh, antibody resistance uh, entero enterococci or something so they found it on like the cup holder just by driving with their windows down behind a truck carrying uh, chickens okay now so someone who's traveled in in you know Cambodia which I love and like you know they often have like chickens everywhere I mean what are they using there I mean I for sure they're using tons of pesticides um, all over Southeast Asia now when it comes to antibiotics I actually I, I don't really know but I'm very curious um, and and so okay so the big problem with antibiotic resistance is you know our, our food supply so it's not just pigs it's chickens anything that they can keep and so this I guess is is a, a more concise <laughs> description of you know how how you get uh, resistance building up and how it passes to humans. So the same article that I posted said that they also swabbed, uh, there was a study with like farm workers and many of them were already carrying um, antibiotic resistance bacteria on them, like something like more than 50%, 64%. Um, and they just swabbed their noses and, uh, and I, there was also a study with uh, meth methylene resistance that staff, um, I can't remember if that was at the farms. Anyway, so, so, you know, so this is kind of the, the schematic of, of a rough idea of what, what it is. Um, so even if the meat is cooked, you still get infected? Even if the meat is cooked? Yeah, mm. It says here consumption of infected meat. Yeah, well, I mean, it depends, right? So, for example, if you like your beef rare, mm -hmm. if you undercook your pork or chicken, uh, the handling of the meat right when when it's raw someone's handling it and you may not eat it but it's it's there it's everywhere it's on surfaces you know you could get on your face like you could you know so so um yeah so but definitely of course consumption is the, the more direct method um, of getting it but the fact is that you would still have bacteria around that have uh, antibody resistance genes and like i said it's easy to pass dna around in microbial communities um so, but, but, but what's really sad for me is reading um, about uh, antibody resistance in, in wildlife, right? So most of these wildlife, okay, these are, this is actually captive, <laughs> captive population of sea lions in Australia. And if I'm not wrong, these are cr critically endangered or at least endangered. And so they, they found that these, these animals have antibody resistance when none of these animals have been treated with antibiotics. And then, uh, and then, and then you have the little penguins in Sydney, which I just learned about as well. And, and they are a wild population, not, not endangered, but they are also finding them antibody resistant in our wildlife. And so what does that mean? So that means that clearly our antibody resistance genes are getting around, right? Into places where nobody was presumably using uh, antibiotics. Um, but also, you know, in, in I, I do wildlife, wildlife, I work with wildlife conservation groups and, you know, all the work that gets put into trying to save animals in zoos and, and you know, protecting that, that population can easily go to waste if, you know, s let's pretend like for some reason, like one of them gets infected and then, and then antibiotic resistance gets spread through there, right? So it's, it's, a, 
it's, people aren't even considering this now in conservation, but it's something that we have to start thinking about. And a lot of it has to do with agricultural use and human use. Um, so, uh, you know, so this, this, there's a great website with a map of, of all, all the resistance bacteria, uh, all the bacteria uh, that have antibody resistance to different uh, antibiotics. Online, this is just one of them. And, and this... <laughs> And this map is just going to, to, to get more colored, right? Probably. Um, if, if you want the website, I can, I can probably get, get good to the link. Um, so, so it's just, so, so but, but being selfish and coming back to us ourselves, uh, you know, MRSA, right? MRSA, it's, not, it's been the news. Like, and so it's actually causing a lot of unnecessary deaths in hospitals. But then, not just in hospitals. Now, I think also from like agricultural workers, right? Because when you, once you get an infection, you it's hard to get rid of it, and nothing's working. Um, so okay, so Anthropocene. So uh, maybe I want to ask, how when you guys think of the word Anthropocene, is it good or is it bad? So anyone thinks it's good? Depends for who. Okay, anyone? Everyone has a negative idea of what Anthropocene is? The Earth is fine. So the Earth is just Earth fine. Is but also, I mean, it, it, you know, essentially the, the, word, the word Anthropocene could just be, it, it, it's in a way another buzzword to think about, uh, you know, our, our, our impact on the environment because like apparently geologists are still arguing with like uh, um, environmental people about, you know, exactly when, when, when is the Anthropocene and we're actually in the Holocene and I actually don't know all these terms, so <laughs> I can't, you know, but I, I, I can't tell you exactly like, you know, how they define, I mean, it has to do with like the soil layer. Um, but yeah, but the Anthropocene has, has just been depicted as, you know, man having huge impacts on, on, on our environment and, and it's depressing, like you have got deforestation, uh, you've got, you know, I, I look at these pictures all the time because I, I look at wildlife like trafficking and, and poaching. These are things that like I, I care about, and you know, you see that like you don't see that like once, you know, once a month. Like you see that every day something is dying, right? And and the anthropocene is just humans having like really shitty effects on on the environment at the moment, right? But but it could be something better than that, I think. Um, and you know, and and part of I, I think there's a lot of. Uh, uh, what I call conservation depression. Like you meet a lot of conservation. I do anyway. Um, or people meeting, or people working in sustainability, and it's really depressing. They'll talk about people are assholes. Oh my god, I'm getting recorded. Okay, sorry. Um, uh, you know, but but it's a very depressing scene, right? You, like, you there's in Southeast Asia, which is where I focus on. There's a lot of corruption. Uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, lack of interest. You know, um, that that you see, and there's a lot. Of, uh, uh, um, how do I say this nicely? Mm, there's a lot of apathy, I suppose, um, to issues that I care about. Um, so, so sometimes I think, yeah, why do I care? You know, like I could just sit and watch free anime for the rest of my life and be entertained with with good food and chocolate. Um, but then I think we should remember again, you know, back to our pool, right? So, so this is my back of the envelope calculation, as I like to call it. Um, it's probably far, really far off. So, according to a 1998 paper. You know, we we poop out about that much. Yeah, I guess you know, depending on your size and how much you eat. Um, you know, apparently, as I heard, some people don't poop for like days. Um, and so, thirty percent of your poo is apparently bacteria, based on some other study. And and the revised estimate of bacteria in humans is about two hundred grams. Okay, so so let's say every day you poop out about thirty sixty grams of bacteria, which is maybe like a, a third of your bacterial committee. I'm you know, and so a third of you, a third of you know, what makes you, you is changing every day. And, and I think like, you know, it's easy to think that people don't change, but we do, we change every day. Like, and also, and also like our back, the way our bacteria com uh, community uh, affect our, what, we, you know, how we behave is a two way street, right? So people, there's studies now apparently where like, you know, if you eat yogurt containing a certain kind of lactobacillus strain, um, people report having a, a better mood, you know, more calm. Maybe less anxiety. Um, so, so you can affect, you know, you have a choice about what you eat. Um, and, and so I think I was being, I was just being silly when I said you are the resistance. Right? You are the resistance in the sense that you are part of the problem if you're taking antibiotics and, and you are helping to pass through, uh, you know, uh, drugs that, that can help to select for antibiotic resistance. But you also have a choice in, uh, you know, if, you, if, you, if all the problems that we look at are, 
look impossible to deal with, your choice is in what you eat. And I mean, you know, Marketa and I have these discussions and she'll talk more about food. And, but, you know, your choice is in what you eat. And I think in, in, in that choice, you can actually start to make little changes that can uh, affect something like any boundary resistance um, that would harm cute little penguins in Australia. So, <laughs> all right, that's it. That's it for me. <laughs> Now we will um, have to dig the dinner, set up the laptop, and in the meantime, we will do.